Hey, what's up guys? It's Ryan and welcome back to another video. This one's going to be a little bit different as I just released a new Fallout 4 load order that transforms the game into a true RPG using a hundred mods. Inside of that video, I talked a lot about the settlement building mods and I'd love to show you guys what's possible with the new settlement mods in that list. So if you're interested in recreating my list into your Fallout 4, I'll have that video linked in the description for you. But nonetheless, I did want to showcase a little bit of my settlement here. I did just build the house that is actually behind me, and I wanted to tour you guys around, show you what it's all about, as well as showcase some of the mods that I talked about in that 100 mod list video, and actually dive into some of these new settlement building mods here. So let's actually begin our tour. This is going to be the home that I created in Sanctuary Hills. This actually isn't anything else, like this is the only thing that I've done to Sanctuary is built this house here. I do plan on expanding if you guys do like this video and want to maybe have a series go where we transform a bunch of different areas in Fallout 4. But this is just our little pilot run. This is what we're going to be dealing with here. This is my house in Sanctuary Hills. We have a little bit of a tour of the outside. I just have a statue out here, a lot of lights and turrets. You know, we stay defended out here, but I also have this giant tank vehicle here that's going to be parked outside. It isn't drivable, sadly, but uh, I did make it so it has its own little driveway here and we can run through the back. And there actually is some ammo crates back here that we can store stuff in before we head out to battle. Um, I did create a little bit of a side passage back here with some hedges, but there really isn't too much to see over here. It's more just scenery. But now moving on to the two entrances to the house, I always enter through the right side because it takes me up to the bedroom faster, so we're just going to stick to that side here. So we're going to enter in through our little door. I do have the home street here from the DC area. There's a lot of stuff that you can actually put in with mods that I'm going to be talking about. As you can see, you may already notice a difference as I walk in through the front door. Uh, we got some paintings up on the wall, a nice little lit up segment here. We have my science area with my weapons workbench. This is actually part of the fab weapons workbench. Uh, there's a ton of other fab workbenches that you can get that I'll show you later, but uh, this is part of the fab workbenches mod that you can actually have clean crafting stations. <laughs> As you would think, you'd wanna work in a clean environment, so everything is nice and cleaned off. And then with the place everything mod that was also in that load order, we have the two little generators that are found in the Institute. I just put next to it just to give it that scenic look. I have a couple pistols up here as well on display. This is my modded MP443 Grokt pistol. It's pretty much what I used the entire playthrough. It's a very powerful silenced pistol, and I really liked playing a stealth character, so that was very useful throughout my playthrough. I also have Kellogg's pistol, as well as a freezing hardened pipe bolt action pistol. It's just three pistols that I had that I wanted to showcase, and I think it really ties the room together, especially for it being the weapons area. So now we're going to be moving on into my little display room here. This is more of a living room as well. We have a couch and a painting on the wall here. There's going to be a way to go upstairs, which I'll show you later, as well as some crates below here. But this is the nice little living area I got. I got a couple things on display, such as my mighty fat man. Oh yeah, that was a beast. Killed a lot of death claws with that thing in the glowing sea. And then I have my furious power fist, which I got from killing Swan. Let me close that up. And then of course the Minutemen outfit that actually was really hard to get in there so I'm not going to open up the display case. <laughs> uh, so we're just going to keep that in there. Now we can move on to the restrooms that I actually have. Yeah, I have a restroom in this building. <laughs> so we have the toilet sink. We got a nice little painting up on the wall there. Very small room. It's just really a bathroom. That's all it is. So I thought that really brought it together nicely. Um, staying along the lines of the first floor, there's some shelves that I stocked up here with a radio as well. We have some stealth boys and some fusion cores, as well as missiles and the Your Special Book. And then the Vault Boy, of course, can't miss out on him. It was actually really hard to put this light in as well, because it's three different objects. There's the shelf that's below him, the actual Vault Boy himself, and then this light. So there's actually a lot of different combinations that you can do with the Place Anywhere mod, which is one of my favorite settlement building mods ever. Uh, I'll actually give you a little rundown right here. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the Place Anywhere mod before, but it pretty much allows you to place any item anywhere you'd like. So let me show you real quick. Say I wanted to maybe put a container on the ground somewhere. Say I wanted it to just be here. So I place it down first, but then you can pick it up and with the Place Anywhere mod, as you can see in the bottom middle of my screen, I have an option to press X to place anywhere. So obviously, yeah, I can't put an ammo crate just on top of this pool table here. But if I press X, which is the Place Anywhere, it'll bring up another prompt that says it's activated. And if I press B anywhere, it just places it in that position. 
and I can just have that sit there. And it works with any object that you could possibly think of in the game. So you can actually make for a lot of interesting pieces. Like as you can see, I did put these through each other and then I put the light there. That was all using the Place Anywhere mod. Uh, same with these here, like these candles on this table, I had to use the Place Anywhere mod for. Oh, we have a mini nuke clipping through there, my bad. Um, but we have a couple other things like our plasma mines, our chirogenic and uh, pulse grenades that are up on our shelves here. Just wanted to make the shelves look a little bit more uh, cluttered. There is a mod that I covered that was in the load order that was the do it your shelf mod, which actually allows you to put clutter items onto shelves, which is a very useful mod. Here's another fabulous workbench that we have in the corner here. This is my fab chem lab. So it's very clean, has a nice periodic table on it, uh, bobblehead, you know, it has the works. And then a nice little chair here. Next up, we have my Nuka Victory and my Nuka Mixer Station, which I think is really cool that they added in for you to have in your settlements. And then we move on to my big crafting area with the weapons, armors, everything. One of my favorite snipers out of all of them that were in the mod list there, the SVU. Very satisfying to use, especially with it suppressed. I felt like a total hitman clearing out some of those raider camps. So that was a very fun weapon to use. But I also have the Armorsmith workbench so I can craft anything I'd want. A nice little bucket there in the corner and my power armor display. I'm using the Shark T45D, which is one of my favorite looking armors in the game. I think it looks really badass and it was really fun to take that to the Glowing Sea. I also have an armor rack here that I can place any type of armor that I'd like. It's just a mannequin that you can put armor right onto. And that's using the BAM or Better Armory Display mod, I believe it's called. So that's a very useful mod to have as well. Now moving on to the recreational area, we have our pool table, we have a nice little jute box, lots of artwork and design around here. I really love these new electronic posters that you can put up. I think they're really cool looking. And I did get a recommendation from a person in the comments that said that there is a canvas mod that you can download that adds a whole bunch of new pictures into the game. So that would be worth checking out, especially after this episode as well. I don't have that installed now, but it'd be worth checking out in the future. I'm always for settlement customizability mods. <laughs> we have a nice little computer here as well as my kitchen area. And same with these little black mats. These were all placed by me. You could, <laughs> you could probably tell right here that these were placed by me because of how off that is. But uh, it fits well and it goes well with the kitchen, I believe. We got a nice little bread box, plant in the corner, and then my working stove, which is also part of that fabulous crafting station, the fab cooking stove, which is a clean stove to use. Now we move on to my dining area. We have a bunch of different refrigerators here, like the Vim and the Nuka-Cola machine, as well as an ice machine. And then I have a booth to sit at with a radio. You can actually turn on and tune to any frequency that you'd like, which is part of Rainier's radio mod, I believe. There's a ton of different mods included in here and it's almost impossible for me to cover them all. So uh, this is definitely an awesome load order and it's one of the best load orders that I made for Fallout 4 in a long time. I love these red couches as well here. I think they look really nice, but just a very simple dining area. And this is also the way that you get out to the outside out here. So this is just the other entrance in. it enters in through the dining area. So it ties everything nicely. I've been saying that a lot. Everything ties everything together nicely. Yeah, let's just keep going with that, right? <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna head up onto the second floor, which is one of my favorite parts. I think it looks the best because we have a nice little bar area up here on top. Lots of seating and just overall looking over the settlement of Sanctuary Hills you can. And there's the front door of our house. Got some turrets set up here as well. Let's turn around back here. I got some coolers for all of the stuff that we're gonna have at the bar that you can store in. And then these little watchtowers here have ammo boxes and containers that'll have any type of ammo that you'll need to shoot any raiders that may come across us. We'll uh, save my bedroom for last, but we're gonna go over and take a trip to our little garden area. To make sure that our settlers aren't radiated, I put these two little decontamination arches so that you can actually get rid of all of your radiation before you handle the crops. Let's walk up, we have um, I believe some melon, some carrots in the corner here, and then moot fruit as well here. And we have another decontamination arch here. More ammo boxes on the ground, just in case anyone comes from this direction. And then our radio recruitment beacon, which is out here on this corner. All right, so that's most of the second floor here. There is one little branch off here again that has more ammo boxes, just in case we get attacked from the front. We'll definitely have a giant look of the front of the house so you can defend it pretty well. 
And now the one of the best parts, moving on to the bedroom. Let's open up and see where I've been sleeping this whole time. All right, this is where the General of the Minutemen will sleep. We have a nice little desk here and some ammo, and then the American flags as well. And then that mod that I was talking about before, the Place Everything mod, allows you to place these really tiny boat figurines. And you can also change the size of pretty much any object that you find in the game as well by pressing X on it, which brings up an options menu. And you can actually desize it and place it onto your shelves. So it actually gave me an opportunity to place a nice little boat statue here. Next up, we have the bobblehead stand, of course, and then my Vault 81 box, which actually contains a lot of the, uh, you know, necessary things that I would need at one point in time, such as the SKK damage modifier. You can change the damage that way. The amazing follower teaks control. It's more so just the configuration things that I would need and, you know, just some unique items that I have in here too, like father's lab coat and uh, synthetic gorilla meat. Um, so just any random type of unique item I'll put in there. And this is actually right here. This is the wireless fuse box that powers all of the electronics that are in this settlement. As you can see, there was no wires that were placed anywhere throughout this entire settlement and building here because I use the settlement electricity overhaul, which allows you to have wireless electricity and it just makes everything look a lot better. Although it does kind of break the electricity in the game. It's not really something you have to pay attention to anymore. But I always felt that running wires throughout your settlements, although realistic and it feels good to do the first time, if you're trying to make a house look good and you know have some good scenery, you're not gonna need wires in there. So the settlement electricity overhaul is definitely a mod I'd recommend checking out. But that is pretty much the showcase of the house itself. I've put a lot of time and effort into creating this house and uh, a little bit of stuff that I can show you before we end the video here. I wanna show you some other things that you can actually place. So let me go all the way back to the main menu here. So like I said, the main mods that we've been covering in this you know, mod list and just overall series of the load order was the Place Anywhere mod, which I already showed you how it works. You can pretty much just place any object anywhere. Then you have the Place Everything mod, which is under the, you know, you can do it under structures, furniture. It's under a lot of different ones here, but I'm just gonna show you under decorations because that's the one I use the most. If you scroll all the way to the end here where miscellaneous is, It'll take a second to load up because there's just so many objects, but you can actually scroll to almost every single item that Bethesda used to create this game is within this menu. You can place boats, but you also have, you know, the boxing rings you can place, campfires, the candles that I used as well, broken cars. You know, there's so much here, and this is the entire list. Even pre-war cars you can put down. Like, look at all this stuff that you can do. I know these are just cars here, but let me get towards the end of this. I like how I say towards the end. There pretty much is no end to this object menu. There is so much to place, and you have so much at your disposal that pretty much any settlement is possible with a mod like this, especially with how many options you get for things you can place. And it's just a perfect mod, and it's one that I would never separate from my load order ever again. Um, but that is the Place Everything mod, and you can really place everything. It pretty much just says it as the name implies. Um, another mod that we use is called the STS, or Scrap That Settlement, and it's also a combination with another mod that we use, which is the SCAP, which is another scrapping settlement mod that allows you to remove stuff like this. As you can see, I walk up, I can actually press X on this and scrap the garbage as well as these leaves here. You could completely clean up Sanctuary Hills one by one. You just gotta be careful because if you do one like this and you delete one like this, here, I'll just do it, I already had a save. It'll delete the whole road. So yeah, you have so much customizability, but you do have to be careful that you don't delete a giant object like that and potentially ruin a part of your settlement like I just did there. But I could even walk up to this house right here and scrap pretty much the whole thing in one go. Look at this. Like. You can really do anything. I mean, it, oh wow, there's a bloat fly there too. <laughs> I know it leaves a lot of the other stuff floating, but it's you know something that you're just gonna have to screw around with and get the hang of. Of course, whenever I enter the settlement menu again, I'll be able to actually delete these menu items here. It's not like these are just gonna be floating forever. Um, but the fact that you can walk up and delete an entire house all at once is just phenomenal to me. And just the fact that the world is your oyster when it comes to building a settlement truly has meaning now because you can literally do anything. 
But I do really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I just wanted to showcase the house and maybe give you guys more of an incentive to create a settlement of your own using the mod list that I created a couple days ago. Like I said, if you are interested in recreating your Fallout 4 into looking like mine, I'll leave the video linked in the description for you so that you can go ahead and do that. And if you do want to see more videos like this of me building more settlements or maybe me touring settlements that I've created, be sure to let me know by leaving a comment and subscribing if you're new. I also want to say special shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for everything that you guys have done for me. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy and I'll talk to you guys later.